Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. We'll be talking today about the FX market structure. Initially, I was uh, thinking how to approach uh, the topic. I wanted to introduce you to to um, some more advancing uh, techniques and uh, in order inefficiencies and how to to exploit. Uh, these market inefficiencies with with which type of uh, of strategies, but then I I realized that um, perhaps it's uh, it would be convenient to to make a previous session on uh, the more uh, basic stuff, basic but not so evident uh, around uh, the effects market structure and how the the, the different uh, layers of and players are uh, are organized and um, as you can see here in the in the image. Um, what, what, what type of orders are, are used in the market and, uh, and specifically how, how these orders uh, contribute to price change and then um, talking also um, a little bit on, on, uh, about liquidity. Um, the, the session will be, will be divided in, um, in four parts. We'll be uh, examining the, the different layers, the different levels in the, in the OTC market, the tier one, two, and, and three, uh, will distinguish between um, the hedging and speculating activities of um, of its uh, players, and then we'll uh, um, dig a, li a little bit deeper into the tier three level and uh, see the differences between brokers and and dealers. Uh, once we have done this, uh, then we'll we'll go briefly. To the, to the order section and see exactly uh, what are the differences between market limit and, and stop orders and how these uh, contribute to, to price change. We'll not uh, go too deeply into, into the topic in this, in this session. There is also not uh, the time for it. But, uh, and, and at the end, we'll, we'll see some, uh, some numbers around um, the volume turnovers that, uh, that are uh, usually um, um, communicated or, or circulating around it that may lead to some to some uh, um, yeah uh, false uh, false assumptions or or can can be misleading um, as to how to trade how to trade the market okay fine let's start then with the sorry Let's go here to the. Let's start with tier, tier one. But first, first uh, let me introduce you briefly, briefly the uh, the FX market uh, structure. Um, the foreign exchange over the counter uh, is, uh, is uh, trades over the counter mean, means that uh, there is no central exchange where traders come come together. This means also that traders transact anywhere they can find a, a willing uh, counterparty and this can can lead to some confusion when when trying to understand the, the structure of, uh, of the market um, this doesn't mean there are no exchanges uh, it uh, just happens that so-called exchanges think uh, can take the form of a bank a bank branch and an interbank platform like like EBS uh, retail broker dealers on the, um, and even currency converters at, at the airport. These points of exchange are different from a traditional one like the, the New York Stock Exchange or the, the Frankfurt Börse, where transactions that occur on the on the exchange are routed through an independent uh, third party for for settlement. In this case, when 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 banks use EBS, for example, to to transact among among each other, there is no no clearing authority. Okay? Banks have have agreements with each other so that both parties are are confident that that transactions executed over over the the network or the EBS, for example, will be will be settled as agreed. So let's start with the with the tier the tier one. Uh, this is the top tier of the of the of the forex market. Um, contrary to what we may imagine, this is not a like I said a centralized exchange, but 
a, a rather uh, but rather a network of, uh, of trading agreements between the world's largest uh, money center banks. Uh, networks like the mentioned at EBS and Reuters uh, enable banks to see how much and at what prices securities are being offered by by other banks connected in the in the in the network. There are hundreds of banks participating in uh, in, the, in the forex in the forex uh, uh, network, so to say. Um, uh, whether big or, or small scale, uh, banks participate in the currency markets not only to offset their own foreign exchange risks and that of, uh, of their clients, but also to increase wealth of the, of the stockholders. Uh, each bank, although uh, differently organized, has a dealing desk uh, responsible for order execution, market making, and, and risk management. And, the, the role of the of the, the dealing desk um, um, can be also to make profits through uh, trading currency directly through through hedging arbitrage or or a different array of uh, of strategy um, what probably distinguishes them from the non banking participants is their unique access to the buying and selling interests of the clients and um, this we could say insider information, you in know, in the legal sense, um, can provide them with with insight to the likely buying and selling pressure on the on the exchange rates at any any given time. But while this is uh, an advantage, uh, it is only of uh, relative value. No, no single bank is is bigger than the than the market as a whole. Uh, not even the major global brand bank names are, can claim to be to be able to dominate the, the market. In fact, uh, like, like all other players, banks are also vulnerable to to market moves, and they are also subject to to market volatility. So the banks have have established. Uh, uh, agreements uh, between themselves, uh, debtor creditor agreements, uh, which make the, the buying and selling of uh, of currencies possible, and uh, to offset the risks of holding currency positions taking uh, as a result of uh, of, com of customers' transactions, for example, the banks enter into these um, uh, reciprocal agreements to quote each other uh, throughout the day on on preset amounts. Okay. Um, this is uh, what is called direct dealing, and direct dealing uh, agreements uh, can include, uh, for example, that a certain maximum spread will be upheld, uh, except uh, under extreme conditions, or uh, it can further include that the rate will be will be supplied in a reasonable amount of time, and so on. Okay, that will be the 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 top tier. The top tier in, in the forex uh, market structure. The, the, the second level, tier two, is the is the interbank uh, market, interbank and and, uh, and prime brokerages. Uh, this is where the, the the market making starts. And above in uh, in tier one, there is only speculating and, and hedging. We'll see it in a moment uh, uh, the definition of these two terms. Um, in, in uh, within the, the tier two um, is is where is where market is created. Everyone has experimented the wide spreads when when exchanging currencies through a local bank branch, and uh, because because this is a dealer exchange, either we accept the price the bank offers or or we shop elsewhere. I mean, it, many times there is no 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 better offer to to choose from. Okay. So this is uh, where where the, the market makers uh, offer uh, prices to to other participants. Then we have the the tier three on on this level. We find uh, uh, this is where the the retail uh, the retail markets are. Here we find the dealers and uh, and and brokers. Okay. For example, the dealers that we we see advertising here at fxc.com, and uh, the dealers and, and brokers they need the liquidity provided by tier two banks, and banks 
from the tier two level agree to provide the liquidity if they can apply their spread and hedge the positions in the interbank market in tier one. Okay, so you see the you see the the, the re relationship. Of course, the the, the spreads this bank uh, these banks offer uh, will be very competitive because of the the volume uh, transacted by by a broker or or a dealer. Okay. So far, so well. Um, is there someone having having sound problems? Okay. So as as we move as we move on, let's um, uh, differentiate here briefly about um, the two um, activities uh, within the, the FX marketplace. Which is hedging and, uh, and speculator speculating um, among hedgers. Hedgers are also called uh, commercials. We see when we see, for instance, the COT report, the commitment of traders uh, report. Uh, the we can see the positions of uh, of hedgers and, uh, and 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 speculators differentiated and uh, within uh, the hedgers um, uh, we find companies importers exporters manufacturers multinationals these are companies that need to hedge their international business transactions or convert income to the to the domestic currency these companies can definitely have an impact on the on the market depending on on the size of uh, of the of the transaction and uh, um, large hedgers uh, um, behave like positive feedback traders. Means they they enter late when the trend is underway. They suffer through all the, the pullbacks during during the trend, and exit late when their their algorithms or their systems are are showing or convinced that the trend is is over. And this behavior causes them to uh, to lose heavily at major trend changes. But don't be misunderstand. These these are not losers. They they simply do poorly as a group. Okay, as a group compared with more optimized possibilities, which uh, the other group speculators has. Hedging is also done by dealers to offset the risk in their in their order book, and we shall see this in in uh, in more detail soon. Uh, as for the speculators, large speculators, as they as they are also called, may be associated with superior forecast ability. Therefore, you want to know if they are net long or net short, and avoid trading against them. Uh, speculators seek absolute returns. Okay, by uh, predicting future price behavior, so it's a different, a different uh, um, uh, approach to the market as the as the hedgers. And the two main analytical methods used uh, by speculators are technical and fundamental analysis, which is also a, a key point that we we shall take into into account later on. There will be um, Different kind of participants in the in uh, in the market sphere. There, there are also central banks, who, which uh, um, uh, may uh, sometimes allocate hundreds of billions of reserves to to a price defense or, or reserve this deserve diversification, and the result is a, is a wild price swing. There are other other market uh, participants uh, could be mentioned, but I wanted here to, just to differentiate between between the activities of hedgers and uh, and speculators. This will this will help us to to understand uh, uh, the rest the rest of the of the session and later on also to develop certain strategies uh, either on one type or another type of uh, of market and taking into account the uh, the behavior of these uh, of these major groups okay so we move on and uh, here we 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 go inside the the level the level 3 the tier 3 
and we will examine uh, more in detail the differences between dealers and, uh, and brokers. Dealers, dealers are also called uh, market makers. Uh, they, they provide liquidity for the, for the participants transacting on their own exchange or, or market. This is the, uh, the, the, the so-called uh, market, market making, okay? They make money on they make money on the on the spread they offer to their to their participants. Sometimes the spread may be fixed, sometimes uh, variable, and uh, and they have a limited impact on prices because uh, what they do is hedge their their next net exposure with the tier two liquidity provider. Okay, remember how they how they are connected. Okay, so the tier two um, banks and, and prime brokerages are the ones offering uh, liquidity to to the dealers, seeking to hedge the risk from uh, their their unbalanced book of, uh, of business. When clients are more balanced to one direction of the market, dealers um, operate in uh, in many exchanges. Uh, like I said, through banks, through other broker dealers, prime bro prime brokers, etc. So dealers usually have have accounts uh, with one or more of the tier two banks. They have access to to price offers and bids, but usually they do not offer the same price as they receive from the banks to their retail to their retail customers. Instead, they mark up the price to include a, a profit for for themselves, and this markup is called the, the spread, as you as you uh, probably know. This means they will receive a series of prices from from the banks uh, with which they they have accounts and and agreements with, and then they will fix the price offered to the retail clients based on the aggregate prices they they receive. Okay. I had um, uh, just to make a small incursion here. I had. Uh, not enough time to prepare images on you so for for the to, to illustrate all this this process so it may be a little bit dry the explanation that uh, that I'm uh, I'm trying to uh, to convey here to you but um, uh, hopefully in a, in a in the next session when we go into more uh, detailed aspects I'll provide hopefully with uh, with uh, with what more images so that you can understand it also from a from a visual from a visual perspective. So moving uh, moving uh, uh, further to other aspects from from the dealers, um, dealers may participate um, in uh, in in dealer based exchanges in other dealer based exchanges uh, means getting prices from another dealer. Um, and also in order driven exchanges like ECNs, for example. And sometimes there are even uh, big liquidity providers in, this, in these exchanges. Okay. In order driven exchanges, dealers have to compete with other participants to, of, to offer the best price. And this contributes for the, the similarity of, of prices across all the, all the FX network. Transactions done through dealers, through through market makers, are so-called quote-driven. Means that when you enter a market order, let's say you sell euro euro dollar, the market maker will match it with its own fabricated bid price. Okay, not the best bid found in the market, but its own bid price, which already uh, includes a, a markup. Okay, so when creating market, dealers will assess the order flow coming in and determine if there are more customers interested, let's say, in buying a certain security than selling it. In this case, the dealer will then adjust the off price to change a little more, a little more to all the buyers, to charge a little more to all the, to all the buyers. So besides making a profit with a spread, dealers may may go even further by shading the price, which is uh, shading the price means uh, it's, the, it's the practice of adjusting their prices to gain an advantage over their of the of the day customers 
or simply to, to discourage them to go in a certain direction and destabilize the, the order flow balance. Okay. Moreover, because this order flow is coming from retail uh, customers mainly, uh, and they tend to be wrong most of the time, the dealer has an another advantage to make a profit by shading the price. If the majority of clients are buyers at a certain, at a certain moment, and the dealer increases costs for buyers to get in the market, he, he also increases the chance of making a gain. So uh, he's, he's trying to, to hedging or to protecting the, the unbalanced order book, but um, at the same time, uh, because the majority of, uh, of players uh, lose, uh, automatically the dealer is also increasing the, the like, likelihood of, of, uh, of making a, a profit. And contrary to, to what many people believe, trading with a dealer has some advantage, advantages too. Okay, there are no commissions, you may use small trade sizes, uh, you are allowed to, uh, to use a high leverage, and, and many times you, you have extra services provided which compensate uh, the, the fact that you are trading uh, with, a, with a market maker. Okay? And as we shall see in, uh, uh, later on, there are some strategies which or some inefficiencies that are better to uh, to exploit using uh, using quote driven exchanges or uh, uh, dealers in this case, while others other other strategies or inefficiencies uh, um, can be uh, exploited uh, uh, through brokers and and, and ECNs. Okay. Moving to to the other component of, uh, of the tier 3 level, which are the, the brokers. Uh, this exchange model allows uh, clients or participants to trade directly with each other. Okay? It allows also to trade between the spread and, and thereby reduce the, the tr reduce the trading costs. Clients pay uh, thereby commissions to to transact on order-driven uh, exchanges. So um, a, a broker uh, where order, uh, order, which is uh, where transactions are order-driven means the, the matching of transactions occurs against the best bid and offer available. So when you enter a market order, let's say the same uh, USD sell order, the broker will match it with another participant's limit buy order, okay? Not with its own fabricated, fabricated price, but with another participant's limit buy order, okay? The downside of, uh, of this model is that liquidity is finite and slippage may occur if there are not enough participants wanting to trade at a, at a certain price, okay? And contrary to what many people believe, an, uh, an ECN, Electronic Communication Network, still exists on Tier 3 level. Okay? Even uh, if it operates similar to Tier 2, okay, uh, it still exists on, uh, on, the, on, the tier, on the Tier 3 level. This is the level where, where the uh, retail players have access to, to the market. Okay? So an ECN broker will establish agreements with several tier 2 banks for liquidity and instead of matching the orders internally like a, like a dealer, like a market maker, it will pass the orders through what, what is known as a straight through processing system. Okay. So the, the, the spread the tier 2 banks apply is still there, is still in the price, otherwise they, they would not provide the, the, the liquidity. And since tier 2 banks are market makers, dealers, the spread may be also widened, uh, as, uh, as, as we have mentioned, uh, through price shading. So um, by there's, sometimes we, we, uh, um, we may think that trading through an, uh, an ECN will be directly dealing uh, in, the, in the interbank, 
and this that is not exactly like that. So we are still uh, uh, still uh, experiencing the spread from the from the tier two banks, okay, and also their practices of uh, of price shading, for example. So typically, brokers that provide straight through processing, they they don't have a dealing desk, and instead they start they, they charge a commission. Okay, for example, 50 cents per per each uh, uh, mini lot traded, and instead of uh, of creating their uh, their own spread. Okay. And the participants in the in the CN will compete with each other to offer the the best price. Okay. There is someone, uh, Brian, asking: um, Is that price shading? Is that, yeah, exactly, price shading, which is the the the, the practice of uh, of moving uh, of moving moving the 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 price, either the the the, the bid or, or the ask price, uh, as to um, discourage buyers or, or sellers from entering into 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 the market okay uh, it may be, uh, the, the what the, uh, the 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 dealer makes in that case is is making the price uh, at one side less attractive for new buyers or new sellers to enter the market and thereby tries uh, to to compensate uh, uh, the, the the order book from becoming too unbalanced because uh, as we shall see later on uh, the, the market is there is there, there there is a lot of liquidity but liquidity isn't as much as we uh, commonly believe so for for the uh, for the for the market maker um, uh, just a, a, a uh, uh, an, unbal an unbalanced uh, book is uh, is a high risk that uh, that he has he has to to hedge in the in the in the in the higher levels of the FX structure and uh, um, uh, because exogenous uh, uh, factors hit the market at the same time there may be periods where uh, where the the dealer may not find a counterparty. Uh, uh, to, to, to hedge his position, and so internally he will try to, to, to shade the, the, the price in order to, to, um, to avoid uh, or to, to, to hinder that the, the book became, it becomes um, too, um, too unbalanced. Okay. All right, so we have seen here the, the three levels. The three levels and, uh, and the two main activities within the FX market structure. And now let's go. Let's go to the to the orders where we'll we'll see some differences between between uh, market orders, uh, limit orders, and and stop orders. This may sound uh, very simple to to most of you, but um, still it's it's important uh, later on to to understand how how prices effectively move what kind of orders uh, uh, bring the, the, the price to to move and how and how orders are are matched against each other and um, and here I wanted to to go a little bit in uh, in detail just to differentiate uh, these these uh, three types of uh, of orders so let's start with market orders uh, with with a with a market order the, the issuer agrees to trade at the best price available at the moment the order is placed. Okay, so the the market order demands immediacy of uh, of execution. I want to buy a certain a certain amount uh, of a certain uh, security, and I want to do it now. Okay, and uh, since since a market order demands uh, immediacy of execution, this type of order consumes the available liquidity in the form of other orders. Okay, so it's important to to see the market order as an order that consumes liquidity. Okay, so market orders are therefore a key element in the, in price movement because 
it's only when available liquidity is consumed at a certain at a certain level that that price can move to another level. Okay. And the difference to or uh, the limit orders uh, as uh, as uh, a different type of uh, of order is is an order to to buy or sell a security at a specific price or better. Okay, so uh, in this case there is no there is the, the immediacy of execution is is not a, a, is not a, cr a criteria. Uh, in this case, it's the limit. It's the limit price which is which is important. Uh, in this case, with uh, with limit orders, and I use here the the, the abbreviation the LMTs for for limit orders. In uh, in in limit orders, uh, execution is not guaranteed. Okay, uh, but they guarantee that the trader does not pay more than a predetermined price for a security. Okay. I want to sell at a certain price or better, so you are guaranteed that you will you will be able to sell a certain security, a certain pair uh, at a at a at a certain price, and you will not pay more than that that limit price. Okay. On the other hand, they don't guarantee uh, execution. Okay, because the the price has to reach that limit, means the price has to move. To find to find the limit order. If price doesn't move, the limit order is not filled. Okay. So now we start to understand one to understand uh, the differences between the market orders which observe uh, liquidity and the limit orders which offer liquidity. Okay. And um, market prices. Are constructed upon limit orders. They, they are the, the the primary source of liquidity. A trader by uh, by uh, placing a, a limit order offers liquidity to the market by offering anyone willing to pay or asking anyone willing to offer a certain amount of securities or currency units at a, a specific price level or better. Okay, so it's it's by placing such an offer, such an, a limit order, that the player is 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 offering liquidity to to the market. Mm -hmm. So these orders, limit orders, establish the current the current price for a for a security. A standing limit to buy establishes the bid, and a standing limit to sell establishes the ask. This means that bid ask prices are made of limit orders. Okay? And in ACN ACN broker, for example, will show the current market prices constructed upon limit orders. And um, in this in uh, besides of market and limit orders we have also stop orders. And uh, stop order is like a limit order in the sense that it will execute when a security reaches a specific price, but the the difference to a limit order is that it becomes a market order once the limit price is reached. Okay, so th these are orders available for execution. So they they also offer liquidity to the market, but. Um, when when converted to market orders upon execution when when the when the price is is, uh, is reached they consume liquidity and also contribute to price change okay and stop orders can be used to enter can be used to exit the the market a buy stop order for example are entered above the current market rate and are used to limit a loss on on a sell trade or uh, protect a profit on a on a, on a short but uh, they can also be used to enter a long position above the current price yeah and conversely uh, a sell stop order uh, is entered at a price below the current rate and is used to to limit a loss or to protect a profit on a long trade. 
yeah, and they can they can also be used to enter a short position below the current market price. Okay, so and stop orders are uh, are responsible for in, in numerous uh, for numerous market inefficiencies which can be exploited, and this this will be the the topic of a of a future session where we will uh, dwell uh, di deeper, even deeper, into the different orders, and we'll construct the um, uh, the, the order flow in a way that we'll we'll see very clearly how the all these different types of orders interact, how price moves, and uh, and how how these inefficiencies are are created. Lastly, I wanted to to show you some numbers on the on uh, the aspect of uh, of liquidity. Let me see if there are some questions just uh, in between. Let me see. What if the market gaps your limit order? Do they execute uh, on based on your limit or will slip? If if there is if there is a gap and the limit uh, the limit order is not touched, means uh, the the from the perspective of uh, of the order issuer, the gap is is giving you now. Or as a result of the of the gap, the price the price uh, being quoted now is worse is worse than than the, the price you wanted. Then it is not executed. O only if you have a gap and the and the next uh, available available price is better than your limit order, then then it it would uh, the the uh, the order will be will be executed. So a limit order is to is to is to limit uh, to limit what you are <coughs> as a as an issuer of that order, what you are uh, willing to pay for a certain for a certain security. Uh, it's a limit price at which you you want to trade. Okay. Usually uh, a limit order is set if you want to to Buy, for example, uh, it's usually set below the current market price. So you 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 want to buy at that level below the current price, or better, because if if it is lower than that limit, it's some extra points that 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 you gain. So if the market gaps uh, gaps lower below below your your limit limit buy, then it will be executed at an even better price. Okay. But if the if uh, uh, if the, the gap is not favorable to to your position and the price is worse, then it will be uh, it will be not uh, uh, not executed. That would be different to uh, to a, to a stop order. Uh, a stop order will uh, transform itself into a market order. Means a market order is an order executed at the best available price. Means if there is a gap and you have and uh, uh, and your stop is is hit and transformed into a market order, um, you would probably suffer the slippage and you will probably <coughs> suffer. The, the the gap because the, the the stop you are giving the instruction to the market that you want to buy uh, at a, a, a certain price and it, and that you uh, or sell for for the, for uh, depending on on the, if you want to to well you, you can use it to enter or or to exit but in any in any case the market in both cases. Will will be transformed into a market order, and a, and a market order uh, uh, seeks uh, immediacy of execution, uh, even if that entails uh, a slippage. Okay. Um, Tom is also asking uh, the, the difference between the limit cell and the stop cell. The the, the limit cell order will be um, if you. Uh, 
if you if you want to sell and and but you want to sell at a a, a, a price above above current the current quote okay let's say price is at uh, 1.3 uh, uh, and you you want to sell at a better at the price above the current and you want to buy it at 1.35 for example or better it's uh, so a limit a limit sell is is a, is an order to is an order which is uh, above the current the current price while a stop sell will be below yeah a stop sell is will be uh, will be below the current uh, the current price so it's uh, you want that you want that uh, immediacy of uh, of, the, of execution. That's why uh, it is transformed into into a, a market order once it is reached. And depending on the liquidity available at that moment, it it may suffer a slippage or not. Okay, and this is something that is is maybe more pronounced trading uh, through a uh, through a broker. Through an ECN, for example, then through a market maker will will probably uh, give you uh, give you a, 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 a smoother price, so to say, than the, than the crude reality of uh, of the of the ECN. Okay, so the, there are certain uh, certain characteristics to to which uh, type of uh, exchange. Uh, which uh, you have to know depending uh, on the on the strategy you you, you want to to apply and uh, and specifically for our intentions here um, are these differences are worth knowing because in in the different types of uh, of of exchanges uh, I, I call them um, is um, uh, different types of uh, inefficiencies in in price uh, occur and these may be may be exploited so uh, allow me briefly just to to go over the the last aspect here on uh, on, on liquidity before I cover uh, uh, some some more some more questions um, because there are um, there are a little bit of um, uh, misleading um, uh, uh, beliefs around the, the the numbers that uh, that you, we we have uh, on the on the turnovers in the FX market numbers that, that are usually uh, collected by by the Bank of International Settlements as for the annual uh, and daily um, turnovers in the in the FX marketplace. We see uh, the last uh, the last uh, report. If I'm not wrong, it's from 2010. Uh, I think I'm not sure. Not right now. But the last number we have is that the daily total turnover is of uh, four. A trillion uh, US dollar. So, um, in uh, the, the the vast uh, majority, in fact, of of this mind-blogging number of, uh, of four trillion uh, per day, it means in each uh, 24 hours, is in fact uh, risk being laid off from from one tier to another. Okay, this is is um, risk that is being hedged against. Uh, uh, or with with other uh, market participants um, in in the form of uh, of um, of limit orders, okay, and uh, in the form of limit orders. And so uh, these these limit orders, and we'll see this in more detail in a in a future session. Uh, when summed up, they they come up to this to this huge number, but uh, uh, effectively the, the the liquidity available is is much less than than that. So we can say that spot transactions, the ones that really bring price to move, uh, have a daily turnover of uh, approximately uh, 1.1 trillion uh, uh, US US dollar, and this is uh, this is on on a 24-hour basis. Okay, this translates into into a flow of roughly a billion US dollar per minute, and if we go further and compute this figure per second, it collapses to 8 million buying buying an 8 8 million uh, selling volume, and this is for all pairs. Okay, so we still have to account for the different volumes in each currency in each currency, and uh, for the most traded pair, for example, the, the euro dollar, the volume per second 
would be uh, something like 3.5 million for the a less a less transacted pair like the Canadian dollar to the to the US dollar is only about uh, a quarter of a million a quarter of a million so you see that liquidity and we shall see this visually uh, hopefully in a, in, a, in a future section uh, more clearly um, that liquidity numbers are are really um, are really uh, very misleading when we when we don't uh, reduce them to the second by second uh, basis, which is uh, how um, how order flow works and how prices are made. So uh, there are a number, a few number of uh, conclusions that we can reach. One is that transaction volumes appear much higher than they actually are. Uh, and second, uh, usually liquidity levels are much uh, less than actual liquidity, which uh, can lead to slippage, which we already mentioned. Um, uh, we can also conclude that even small orders can have big impact on price. Okay, this will be an important uh, aspect to know. And also uh, that market makers need to aggressively shape prices uh, to minimize their, their risk exposure, because it's a, you don't need so much volume uh, to move prices uh, uh, when when you take into consideration the the real the real volume uh, transaction volume figures okay so in the in the next session hopefully we will see how liquidity is, is displayed across the the market and how did we come to the 1.4 trillion instead of 4 trillion how how that how we can distinguish between the, what is spot and and uh, what is how how did we come to the other uh, trillions of the uh, of the overall volumes how they are called calculated or or displayed we also see how orders move prices in in more and more in, in detail and uh, and what kind of uh, inefficiencies can be can be exploited okay Fine. I don't know if uh, I think we have a minute or so to 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 uh, finish the session. Let me see if we have a, a few questions here. How does small orders impact price? Uh, it is uh, it is when volume is low. Yes, obviously this these figures that I come up here are are still uh, average. Uh, I, I I've just reduced the the day the 24 hours to to two hours and minutes and seconds. So still we are talking about averages. It may be higher, it may be lower, but the fact is that you can reduce it to a very insignificant number if you, uh, especially in in less traded uh, pairs. Uh, the number on a second by second basis is is really 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 low um, so it's not so difficult to move price or for a price to move and subsequently uh, we can conclude also that um, that is there that um, that a lot of movements are are triggered uh, because of uh, of uh, order flow and uh, and nothing nothing more. There is uh, no, no it's, it's not tied to 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 their to their fundamental uh, uh, um, uh, to any fundamental uh, reason. Although uh, fundamentals do play a very very important role in uh, in shaping sentiment, as we'll. we'll we, we, sh we shall see it also in more detail in the next, in the next session. Uh, so, for example, uh, for news trading, which is better a CN broker or a market uh, maker deal? Uh, uh, this will depend. The ECN will be a very crude uh, reality if you, because uh, during news announcements, the ECN uh, will show uh, what tier two level uh, banks are doing, which is protecting also their uh, their, their 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 books, and uh, uh, well, a, a market maker it will depend, but usually usually on a market maker, but still there uh, uh, the the market maker will will try to protect uh, to protect itself. You know, will try to protect itself. Yeah, if there is no protection from the side of uh, of your market maker, um, then um, well. Uh, then he has other incentives to to make money or other other ways he is making money uh, through other other ways and uh, he doesn't need to to protect itself 
Yeah, slippage uh, may be due to lack of liquidity. Lack of li liquidity, as we said, is lack of limit, or li limit orders, correct, okay. Okay, fine. Thank you very much for, for the participation. Thanks for everyone, the uh, 24 attendees, for, for coming. Um, I, I would encourage you, the, the ones that I've seen here that have no name or nickname displayed, probably you are not uh, registered on the site. Take a few minutes uh, and uh, to, to register to the site so the next session uh, the, the presenter can see and communicate with you, at least with your, with your username. Uh, we will also, you will also have access to some parts of the website which you are required to, to register. Okay, thank you very much. Have a wonderful uh, rest of the day and, uh, and a good week. Good trading. Bye-bye. Thank you.